Okay. Sure. Now, la last week we were talking about the building of the Kaaba, didn't we? Right? We were talking about Ibrahim alayhi salam, right? How he was um, making dua to Allah, right? Um, making dua to Allah that uh, Allah would send a messenger, right? To to lead, yeah, to to be uh, to purify the place and all this. Subhanallah. So th th this is when the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam was answered about more than two thousand years later. Who did Allah send? Yunus. Uh, you know, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, isn't it true, right? To to show you and I the 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 manasik, the the manasik manasik the rituals of Hajj. Do do you know how exactly? How do we know the rituals of Hajj? Who who showed who to which prophet to first of all to is it to Ibrahim alaihi salam to, to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? That means much, Hajj has a right? several rituals, right? You need to do the tawaf seven rounds around the Kaaba, and then after that, you 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 run around seven times between Safa and Marwa, and all this going to different places in Mina and Arafah. You saw on TV and all this. What as a who who is who was the one who was shown first the rituals? I'm, I'm going to go on a limb here. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It was a. Uh, yeah. Are you sure? Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ibrahim alayhi salam is intro. So what, what exactly happened? What who who showed to him? Angel uh, Jibreel came down. Yeah. Yes. I'm, I'm, yeah, I was gonna say that. And then I think uh, Angel J uh, Jibreel he did it. He did the tawaf. Was it like he did it as well? Yeah, that, that was amazing because he, he, he held Ibrahim's hand, right? No, and know. then literally yeah, because in those days, right? Because usually when the angel Jibril came, would he come in the form of angel or in the form of human being? Human being. Oh, oh, human being. Yeah, human being usually, right? We can we see we see a few examples of the angels who came to like Ibrahim al -Islam himself to warn him about uh, that he, they are going to destroy uh, the people of Lot, isn't it true, right? In the form of human beings, and then the, the people came again to Prophet Lot al -Islam, right? Um, usually, and angels are usually very good looking. Right. Yeah. Uh, they got, got amazing looks. All right. So of course it, it, it attracted the, um, you know, the people of Lot and all this. So they would come in the form of human being. Right. <laughs> which example? Which which example did we see that? Uh, and which hadith did we see that Ibrahim uh, Jibril and Salam came in the form of human being? Which hadith? Very famous hadith. Mm -hmm. Is it? I know, but, but which, which, what is the story that he came to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Very famous. Oh, the cave, the cave story. Sorry? The one where the Prophet was in the cave. Oh, Jibreel, when he came down to teach no. uh, Prophet Muhammad. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I went, khalas, I'm done, I'm leaving. Which one? Yeah, which, which story is this? Uh, was it was... when the Prophet was in the cave, right? Or like... Was it when he was in the... Yes, uh, no. Marketplace. No, he came a few times, but this, but this very famous, famous, famous story. Is it when he cleansed his heart? Everybody must know this. What happened? When he cleansed his heart, when he when he stabbed his heart or something, that right? I think. Yeah, but but this is even more famous. This is this is when Jibril alayhi salam taught us the deen, right? He came, you know, that the Sahaba was sitting around Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, right? And then somebody came in. Completely white thobe, and the hair is so dark, right? And came into this mosque, right? You and I know that in those days there's no transport, right? If if you are traveling here and there, you would definitely be, you know, very dusty clothes, your hair a lot of, you know, all these uh, sand and all this, right? It's quite different from now where you can travel in comfort in a car. In those days, right? You will know who is a traveler, but this one is very different, right? Extremely white top, black hair coming in, right? And he sat next to Prophet Muhammad as in you know, sitting sitting on, on the knees, and then the, the knees of both of them are touching. And what did he ask Muhammad Oh, I, he said, Tell me about Islam, right? Precisely. Yes. Right? So, oh, so, yes, yes, I remember this. And this is a very famous hadith, and, and he came in the form of a man, right? And uh, he he asked, okay, tell me about Islam. So people are quite, uh, what do you call it, um, 
quite surprised, right? Tell me about Islam and Muhammad says Islam is uh, shahada, right? Salah and all this, right? What's the next question? Um, and, and sorry, and, and, at the end, and he did say, yes, you have told the truth. And the, 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 <laughs> the Sahaba, they were quite shocked. Ah, this, this stranger, very daring, right? He, oh, he yes. asked, and then for that, he confirmed it, you see? Uh, usually people in those days, are, they're, they're, especially the Bedouins, right? They're quite uh, ignorant, right? Um, they do not know much about the thing. But this one asked question, it was answered, and he confirmed it. Yes, you are correct, yeah. right? And then what's the second question? He said, I think he said something about either excellent or faith. I okay. Think, I so think, what's the next question after Islam? So I think he said, tell me, I think he said, tell me what Allah. faith is. Tell me about Iman. Iman, faith, yeah. Iman, your faith. Yeah. Right. And then after that, tell me, so Muhammad says Iman is to believe in, you know, all these six articles of faith, right? Yeah. Um, Allah, angels of Allah, books and all this, right? Yeah. And now the third question. Uh, it was Ihsan. It was excellent. Yeah, about Ihsan. So what is Ihsan? Excellent. Yeah, but <laughs> what is what is in full sentence? To describe it. Is it to live your life as if uh, uh, you see Allah? Almost there, but the beginning part is not correct. It's how you worship Allah, right? Yes, yeah, you worship Allah yeah. as if you see Allah and... If, if, if you don't if, see Him. If you can't... Oh, you avoid sins, right? Because you, you see Him. Oh, you, it's like you see Him. <laughs> you worship no, Him if as you, you can't, you... You will, you know that Allah is watching over you or looking at yeah. you, right? So that means Ihsan is, is a very extreme part of the deen in the sense that, mm. you know, it's difficult for you and I to practice, isn't it, right? Yes, alhamdulillah, many times, but sometimes we forget, right? That means you worship Allah as if you see him. But if you know that you cannot do this, know that he's always seeing over you, right? So... At all times, right? Whether we are at home, whether we are in Las Vegas, whether we're in America, right? You will be watched, right? 24 hours a day until your last breath. So this is the third question, Ihsan. So this is a three levels. Sorry, my... Sorry? Sorry, I always get confused. There. I just want to um, like uh, say it to you. So Ihsan is um, you worship Allah as if you see, as if uh, you see Him. Yes. Uh, if you can't, um, 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 it's uh, you know he's there. He's, you know he's watching you. Yes. Okay. Jazakallah. Right. So I mean, not all, not many of us are at the same level. So, so it, it first of all, it clarifies the different levels of, I should say, the deen, isn't it true? So, what is the lowest level? Islam. Right. That's why. That's why some of the Bedouins. In parts of the Quran, they say, "Oh, we believe Muhammad Allah said to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 'You are, no, you know, you are not a mu'min. You don't believe, right? You are just, you just, you just starting to submit, right? Believe is another different level, isn't it true, right? This was Alhamdulillah, like our two brothers, just to shahada, brother Morgan and brother um, Raul, Raul, right? Um, they they just submitted." Right, alhamdulillah, with Allah's guidance. That means, by, uh, we're going to talk on Sunday, inshallah, about the seven conditions of shahada, right? So you need to do your homework. Right? What are the seven conditions of shahada, inshallah, right? Um, so when when you submit, it's just the actions, isn't it true, right? So because <laughs> the, 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 the belief hasn't entered your heart there. For, so for example, I think none of you are married, isn't it true, right? Soon, soon inshallah. Okay, <laughs> so in a sense that if, if you're married, for example, right, then you would know that, well, at the beginning stage, right, unless you are some people who have, who have these boyfriends and girlfriends things, but it's not allowed in Islam, of course, but in general, you don't know your wife well, right? You can, you can know her from the outside, but unless you stay in the same house as the person, right, then you, you cannot know the person well, isn't it true, your wife, right? Yeah. So... But as the time goes by, then that love will come in, isn't it true, right? That love, that trust, and, you know, the communication, it comes in. But it just it just takes time, right? So when a person took shahada, 
is all about actions. I, I need, I know, I need to do this. I need to do that. I need to do my zakat. I need to do all this. Right, the, the five pillars of Islam. But it's not about that belief because you do not know Allah yet. Right. So this does take time. So Islam is at the lowest level, right? And then after that comes Iman. After Iman comes Ihsan. What is Iman? Who, who are the believers? Did, did Allah explain it in the Quran? Who are the, who are the believers? Would Allah explain in the Quran who exactly are the people who call themselves Mu'min? So Muslim, Mu'min, Muhsin, right? Who are the Mu'min? Akram? Um, Which surah in the Quran? It's not Mu'minun. Definitely not. Uh, right. Is it Baqarah? No, it's surah, surah number 8, right? If it's surah, surah number 8, in verse number 2, inshallah. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim. Innama al-mu'minun al-ladhina idha, right? The believers are the mu'min, only those, right? Idha dhukira Allahu wa jilas qulubuhum. When Allah's name is mentioned, they feel a fear in the heart, right? So when Allah's name is mentioned, let's say when you listen to the Quranic recitations and all this, does it bring this fear in your heart? Or is this, is this just something that you hear and then comes in the right ear, come out of the left ear? Right? So, Malim, what page, what, what surah? Uh, 8, verse, verse number 2. Oh. Al-An'am, verse number 2, right? Very, if you and I, if we think that we are on another level, then you need to assess yourself honestly whether, first of all, as Allah said, when Allah's name is mentioned, you feel a fear in the heart. Okay, the next one, right? Con continuing to ver at the verse number 8, verse number 2, right? وَإِذَا تُلْيَسْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتُمْ imana. Yeah, when the verses of the Qur'an are recited unto them, they increase the faith. Right? You know, right? Many people now, um, you listen to the Quran because, oh, so beautiful. That's about it, you know? It, it just ends at the ear, right? Or you you hear the people, see the people, uh, listen to the Quran, right? Um, in, in, in the Ramadan, especially in pre-COVID-19 era, right? It's just something that you listen, right? They never increase the faith. Okay? And the, and the third thing, right? Um... And they put their trust in their, uh, their Lord alone, right? So I repeat again, the first, if, if you want to consider yourself as a mu'minun, or a mu'min, yeah, or a person with, with who is, uh, has iman, right? The first one is, what did Allah say, brothers? The ones who have fear when Allah is mentioned. Yes, yeah, so Allah needs to mention. You, you truly feel fear. You don't. It's not a pretending thing. You truly feel fear in the heart. All right, what you have done, what you have not done in the past, you remember, right? Secondly, uh, when the verses the are recited, the... increase your faith, right? Then thirdly, put there trust. trust in Allah. This tawakkul, brothers, you and I know, right? It's very simple to advise somebody. Don't worry, right? You got no job, COVID-19, right? Just be patient, right? Trust Allah. But if you have families to feed, you got no jobs and all this, that then you come as a very big test, right? But those who trust Allah, you and I know, brothers, that's why we talk to people. If you know tawheed, you know everything about the deen, isn't it true, right? That means you know that the one who provides you is not yourself with the, with the, with the means to earn a, a living. It is Allah, isn't it true? You just need to, to work hard and all this, to put in effort, right? No effort, of course, it wouldn't come in. And I'm, I'm not talking about people who are on benefits, right? Uh, but this, I'm talking about people who actually work, right? That Allah give them the... Um, ability to to earn uh, the the put provisions yeah in the bank account so this is important trusting in Allah right a lot of people are tested and yet they are not able to pass the test okay so so do be careful in this so a person with iman would would trust Allah just like when the birds every day they go out of the nest 
they will come back full. Isn't it true? They trust Allah. Even though, even though their brains are much smaller than us, I think that tawakkul or the trust Allah is much more than you and I. Isn't it true? Right? So this is where um, you will need to understand this word tawakkul because it's very important. When you leave the house, what do you say? You say the dua for leaving the house. Which is? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, just a little bit of uh, uh, error. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Oh. Wala hawla wala quwata illa billah. In the name of Allah, I put my trust in Allah. Right? Wala hawla wala quwata illa billah means? No power or might. Yes, yeah, so might, no might and power except Allah. And, and we need to understand this, brothers. Let, let's leave those jahiliya days behind where we just recite and we don't understand. Isn't it true? Right? Because when we say something, make sure we mean it. That means we put our trust in Allah completely. And if we put our trust in Allah, what would happen? And if you look in again, I always, always repeat this verse, right? In surah number 65, in verse number 3. Isn't it true? Right? 65 verse number 3. Very clearly, Allah informed us about those who put the trust in Allah, right? Um, 65 in verse number 3, Allah reminded us, la yahtasib, wa ja'ala li kulli shay'in qadra, right? And Allah will provide him from sources he can never imagine. And whoever puts his trust in Allah, then he will suffice him, verily Allah will accomplish his purpose. Indeed, Allah has a set measure of all things. Now, this is quite, quite important for you and I to understand, right? Quite a lot of times we are in a situation where, yes, we pray, we help the poor, um, we help others on the deen, right? And yet, a lot of things may happen negatively on our side perhaps we, we may lose job um we we may face divorce in our, in in our marriage or whatever it is right and this is something brothers that you and i we have to really not blame allah do you agree yes a lot yeah. of people will blame allah why is it, and the shaitan will come in right shaitan will come in and say why why, why are you bothered to pray? You pray, you still got no jobs, right? You have to feed your family, nothing comes to you. And this is very important for you to understand about um, this thing in which we call tawakkul, right? trust in Allah, right? Because shaitan will come into your mind and will say, what's the point of, you know, doing all this? Right? You are still poor. Why don't you compromise? Why don't you set up a restaurant and you sell alcohol and all this? You do know what I mean, right? And people are always doing this, okay? So so do be careful um, that you don't let shaitan come into your mind when things happen to you, okay? Now, um, Any questions so far about this, right? Now, this is the, this is the third quality, but it's trust. Number four is in, in Surah one number eight, you right, in verse number three. Sorry? Uh, don't worry, no, never mind. A lot of distractions in intro. It's very irritating. Okay, number number three. Now, describe to me what is yuqim, what is aqim in salah? It's not just... Pray, it's like perfect your prayer. Yes, to fulfilling all the obligations of a prayer, right? Most important thing will be? Um, you're a Muslim. And your khushu, is it true, right? Uh, that you're able to have this uh, surrender to Allah completely. Yeah, khushu and all this, right? And you will, um, for the brothers, if you, of course, it's pre-COVID-19 and Perhaps in the future, right? Go to the mosque, right? Doing congregations and all this, right? Do an early stated time, right? So all this is is aqim is salah, not just to uh, pray for the sake of prayer. It's not a ritual aspect of the prayer, okay? Now in the next part of verse number three, right? 
wa mimma razaqnahum yunfiqun and spend out of that we have provided them right spend in terms of helping out especially about your zakat right once your zakat is taken care of additional sadaqah is a bonus right so make sure we take care of our uh, pillars of islam first and then of course inshallah we will help others who are suffering in yemen inshallah as i said uh, once come to the 10 days of sulhijah we're going to start um to help those people who are in yemen inshallah right who are millions of them are uh, really really suffering now especially with covid 19. okay now the reward I have a question. Of, oh, let me finish Sorry, this first, um, right let me finish okay, this first, right? Now, reward of all being a mu'min, ulaika humul mu'minun na haqqa, right? Lahum darajatun inda rabbihim wa maghfiratun wa rizqun karim. It is they who are the believers in truth. For them are the grace of dignity with their Lord and forgiveness and a generous provision, right? So three things, right? Um, grace of dignities, right? With Allah, forgiveness and jannah. Right, so these are those people. Uh, this this uh, reserve for those who fulfill the five criteria which we discussed in Surah number eight, verse number two and three. Right, uh, of a people who are called themselves as mu'min or mu'minun. Okay, so, Akram, what's your question? Uh, yeah. So, uh, how would you pay? How would you pay zakat? As a, what do you mean? How you pay zakat? Like, zakat. Uh, so um i forgot how so i just all i remember is that it's 2.5 from your savings of your savings you pray do you right. do you play it pay it every year or forgot yeah you pray year. of course it must be every year all right okay it must be done every year but of course there is allah is so generous or so merciful that is of course a uh we call it the threshold or they call it nisab or right? equal to the level of you can choose either silver or gold, right? Silver is, I think, if I'm not mistaken, about 250 or 290 pounds, right? Gold is a bit more expensive, but people prefer to use the lower ones so they can help others, right? It's only 2.5%, it's not much, right? <laughs> and and if at partic any particular day you're in your savings account, it dips below that amount of the NISAP, you do not need to pray any zakat completely, right? Um, especially so as you know. With COVID-19, people are losing jobs. You have to pay for your repairs and for your for whatever things you have in the house. Okay? Yeah. Is there a specific yeah. month that you're supposed to pay it in? No. You just need to choose a month. So, And it's not, brothers, it's not, or it's, it's wrong to assume that, oh, you must only pay in Ramadan. Right? You can pay, can pay in any other month. It need not be in Ramadan. Right? So, so this is an obligation. You and I know, right, when Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi passed away, what happened? There was a people who didn't want to pay zakat, right? Yes, Abu Bakr then, fought them. Yes, because Abu Bakr, brother, he did not want people to differentiate between salah and zakat. That shows the importance of zakat. And as I said many, many times in this group, right, don't think that, oh, I, I'm doing them a favor. They are doing you a favor, isn't it true, right? By giving your, your the wealth that not... It's not your wealth, it's the things that Allah has given you and I, right? To help the poor so that you and I can enter Jannah, isn't it true? Right? It's not about we being so generous, kind, helping us. No, of course not. This is to purify our wealth, firstly. And then secondly, it is to for our own benefit, not for not just to help others. Okay? But well, then who 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 entitled Sheikh Zakat? I'm sorry? Who entitled? I understand Sadaqah is different, but Zakat. Which specialize is it Allah say about Zakat? Brothers. Is it Al Bahra? You've got to pay 3.5%. Uh, oh, and Nisa. Which surah did Allah specifically say who are the ones who ent are entitled to receive our Zakat money? Is it? Mujahidah. No. Wait, okay, can you give a can you give a range between um the numbers like sixty mm -hmm. to seventy? It, it, it's so important, mm -hmm. isn't it? True. It's, it's not. I can't use my zakat money to pay for the mosque, huh? right? I no, can't. I, I can't use my zakat money to to build an orphanage. That's not is it the poor, the fukra, the the travelers, those who yes. are collecting? Is it? Yes. Which surah? 
<تصفيق> حديد اساسا على النساء يعني النساء على سينجل النساء اوكي Right. It's right number nine, verse number 60. Right. Oh. I'm not going to look because it's a long topic. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There are eight, uh-huh. eight groups of people who are entitled, even the new Muslims are, are, are entitled for receive, to, to make their hearts close, to uh, uh, incline them to Islam. Right. Um, but, but for pe- people with debt, right, those travelers. And uh, brothers, travelers doesn't mean that those people who are staying in Ritz Carlton, right, a uh, traveler that receive, can receive uh, these. Um, Zakat is neutral. The travelers are specifically, specifically those who do not have money to go back home. Right? Not people who are staying in what? In in the, the nice hotels and all this. It's specifically for like those immigrants who can then. travel home. Right? Like immigrants. Illegal not immigrants. Just, not just immigrants. I'm an immigrant. Oh. Give me Zakat. <laughs> How much? Right? I'm How? an immigrant. <laughs> Right. No, I think I think the people who are stranded in the shack, who are stranded, yes, uh, who are stranded. stranded yeah. right? I know yeah. people, some people who were, who came to London. Well, well, I don't know whether he's telling the truth or not, right? Came to me in San Tomas, cannot go back to I think Ethiopia or one of the countries, right? And then fine, right? We help and all this. Then oh, three months later, came back again. Like Subhanallah, why you come back again? You know. So, um, they yeah. Try so on they, yourself, he's trying on your That's a bit fishy, Sheikh. What? Allah alam. I mean, as long as we we do our job, it's fine, right? Um. So so this is very important to know who are the, which are the eight criteria, right? Even one of them is for those who collect collect the money. So if I collect the money from you, right? I won't I won't take it, of course. But these are the people who actually would be at the place, right? Like in Indonesia when we collected money, and I know I, I've been I've been there before, right? To to all the malls. The malls are so far away, about two three hours drive, and then you know went through the mountains here and there, all the effort and all the patrol money, all all uh, you know used up and all this. So that he is entitled to to the zakat, not me, right? I'm just collecting and just give it to them, right? So the people who actually go and distribute, right? So usually when when you guys give me the zakat, I always give maybe about 10% of the zakat money to them because these are the people who are entitled to get the zakat, right? Because they distribute the money. Without them, you know, we can't distribute the money, right? And zakat must can only also be in the form of the the crops, isn't it true? The rice and the barley and all this. Right? Rice and all that, yeah. So let's not talk about this, right? Because we are talking about um, the rituals of Hajj, right? Why we talk about this? Because we talk about Jibril alayhi salam would come back, would come to uh, some of the prophets in a form of a human being. Wasn't it true, right? Now, so so let let's now go through the next part of recitation in surah number two, in verse 130, right? What is so special about Ibrahim alayhi salam besides being a friend of Allah? What exactly did he always emphasize about? Uh, monotheism. One God. Right, isn't it? What? One God. Yeah, what is it? The one that's Tawheed. Tawheed. I know, what in, in Arabic? <laughs> Tawheed. <laughs> Tawheed, isn't it? <laughs> right? It's about Tawheed. Yeah, and, and that, there's this word that Allah always uses in the Quran. What is it? Tawheed. I know, but there's another word. Hanif. You heard about Hanif, right? No. Hanif, Hanif is Islamic monotheism, right? Hanif. And it's very, very Hanif important, Hanif. right? Yes, Which you and I, and we, we, are, we are following his footsteps, the intro of Ibrahim alayhi salam, right? In terms of Hanif, right? Um, but let, let's, let's look first in Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah number two, in verse number 130. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما يرغب عن ملة إبراهيم إلا من سفيه نفسه ولقد استفيناه في الدنيا وإنه في الآخرة لمن الصالحين. And who turns away from the religion of Ibrahim? What is the religion of Ibrahim? Islam. Islam. No, I just said this now. Hanif. 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 Hanif, yeah. I know it's Islam, but Hanif is more specific, right, towards the fact is is Islamic monotheism, right? 
um, except him who befalls himself. Truly, we chose him in this world, and verily, in the hereafter, he will be among the writers. Now, so we, we talked about the examples of Ibrahim A.S. What examples that do we know or we have seen how he always championed Tawheed? With the, his early childhood, he was like destroying the idols and they were like challenging him, but he resisted. Let's not talk about this violent thing first, right? What else did, what else did he do? What? What do you mean? What else did he do besides this? Let's talk about these things. Searching for Allah. Searching for yeah, Allah. Searching and... Allah. Isn't it true? Right? If you look in, for example, Surah number six, if I'm not mistaken, right? No, Akram, what you say is correct, of course. I'm just trying to be more, what do you call it, structured in the sense that look at the simple things first, right? Because everybody was worshipping idols, right? What did he do? He was looking around. I think if you look in Surah number six, in verse number 75, if I'm not mistaken, right? Let me see. 70, right? 74 first, all right? In the meaning. And remember when Ibrahim said to his father, Do you take the idols as Aliha or the gods? Verily, I see you and your people in manifest error. So, Tawheed is, 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 is at the very core of Ibrahim's mission, isn't it true? Alayhi salam, right? And then, thus did we show Ibrahim the kingdom of the heavens and the earth, and he be one of those who have faith with certainty. And then, 76, when the night comes, when the night covered him over with darkness, he saw a star. He said, This is my Lord. And when it set, he said, I like not those that set. 77, when he saw the moon, right? Same thing, right? The moon set. And then, number 78, he saw the sun. Sun still set, right? Uh, uh, during the sunset. Now, 79 is absolutely important. Now, this is one of the things in which I use this according to Hadith from Muslim, right? When You know when you say Allahu Akbar before Al-Fatiha? I will say this as a means to, to, to profess my, my uh, Islamic monotheism to Allah, right? وَجَّهْتُ وَجْهِيَ لِلَّذِي فَطَرَ السَّمَوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضِ حَنِفًا وَمَا أَنَا Right? I have turned my face towards him who created the heavens and the earth, Hanif, right? And I'm not of Al Mushrikun. So this is very important, right? To to establish the first establishment, right? And this is quite tricky, isn't it, brothers, right? When you are surrounded, who do who do not love your parents, right? And in general, even even nowadays, right? Even we in among our Muslim countries, right? We are, people are always following the uh, mythology of your parents, even though you do not know whether it's true or not. You just follow, isn't it true? Right? Even there's no hadith, there's no evidence. People still follow, isn't it true? But Ibrahim alayhi salam has been taught, and this is very important, brothers. When we see this example, what did Allah or what is Allah trying to tell you and I, right? That is not about what your forefathers are following, isn't it true? Right, it is upon what it is absolutely correct in terms of our deen. Right, Islam itself means complete submission to Allah. Right, and the core message of Islam is always about monotheism, isn't it true? Oneness of God. Right, so so this is this is at the very core of our basic um, knowledge that we must not follow the majority. Are many of us following the majority? Yes, especially with that video with the grave. We 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 shouldn't, isn't it true? Right, right. Who who posted that? Subhanallah, right? Was it the video of the grave about this thing? About the the bird, isn't it true? Yeah. yeah. Well, he he wanted to start surah 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 yasin, wasn't it true? Um. So in the same surah, number six, verse number one one six, right? What did Allah say? Surah number six one one six. Right? And if you obey most of those on the earth, they will mislead you. Far away from Allah's path, they follow nothing but conjectures or guessing. And they do nothing but lie. It's just a guess. Well, I think I, I need to recite Surah Yasin. At the graveyard. Why? Because everybody is doing that. So I need to follow. Isn't it true? 
it, does it occur in your culture? It occurs in my culture, right? That upon somebody's death, people are reciting Yasin, uh, they have seven days of gathering, 40 days of gathering, and all this. All this has completely no basis in the Quran and in authentic hadith. Sah, agreed? Morning. Yeah, I agree. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I just wanted to say, like, whenever I hear Surah Yasin, I always get the misconception that there's, like, always um, people reciting at the wrong time. But is yeah. there... I, know, I think I've asked you this question before, but I forgot how you answered it. So, like, what are the times that you're supposed to recite Yasin and like, what are the benefits? Because Surah Yasin, if you follow the um, research done by the Sheikh Albani, at least most of the hadith that is related to Surah Yasin are all either fabricated or not authentic. Right? Or is weak. Sorry. Right? So, for example, in my culture, every Thursday night, people read Surah Yasin. Right um, now, let let's think about it logically. Right, when somebody died, right, a lot of people think that where Surah Yasin is for for the deceased, isn't it true? Right, you recite Surah Yasin when you go to the grave for the deceased. What is the Quran? What is the function of the Quran? Is it for the deceased or for the living? Living, living, right. This is a book. There's no doubt, right? A guidance for those with taqwa. A guidance, right? If somebody died already, what kind of guidance does he need? It's finished, right? It's game over, right? There's no point giving him guidance because that nothing else is able to make him his position better in the hereafter. Everything should have been done in this world. Right, including having a brightest child, including donating money to the mosque and all this, Sadaqah Jariyah, everything should have been done in this world, right? There is no guidance at all for those who have died, right? So, so technically, just thinking about it logically, if you said Surah Yasin to the deceased in the grave or in front of a dead body, does it help actually the deceased? Yes no. or no? No, right? Because everybody is trying to follow the ancestors, right? Everybody is trying to follow what has been seen by the shuyukhs and all this without any evidence at all or strong evidence to, to support what you are doing, right? And if, if you look and Allah address this issue, right? If you look in surah number 5, verse number 104, right? 5, 104. And 105, right? Yeah, you had, sorry, 104 first, okay? Right? And when it is said to them, come, come to what Allah has revealed and unto the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they say, enough, right? Enough for us what we find our fathers are following. Even though Allah said, even though the fathers have no knowledge whatsoever, no any guidance, right? People just follow, isn't it true? As in talking, coming back to Ibrahim Alaihi Salam, right? The issue with the fathers and all the people, right? The people are just following the uh, uh, rituals of their forefathers, isn't it true? Just worshipping idols and never thinking about things, right? That's what Allah warned us in the next verse, 105. <laughs> so like a, right? Yeah, <laughs> Or oh, you believe, take care of your own self, right? لا يضركم يضركم من ضل إذا اهتديتم إلى الله مرجعكم جميعا فينبئكم بما كنتم تعملون. Right. So Allah informed you and I, and this is an order. Take care of your own selves. Right. If you follow the right guidance, no hurt can come to you from those who are in error. The return of you all is to Allah. Then He will inform you about all which you used to do. Right? So don't follow the majority, right? You need to you need to ask Allah for guidance, isn't it true? Right? Alhamdulillah, I, I really admire those people who um like for example the one who took just to Shahada, sixteen years old, right? Um not 
not in the exact, I mean, in the sense of not caring about what the parents think, right? Just searching for the truth, and the truth came, guidance of Allah came, and took shahada. Right, as straightforward as that, right? And he did, he did a lot of research, I'm sure, right? Same thing as the brother uh, Morgan who took shahada also, right? A lot of research and all this, and then they will plunge into the world of Hanif, yeah, in terms of oneness of Allah. So this is something in which um, everybody is going through a different journey, isn't it true? Everyone's journey is different. But brothers, make sure that the journey that we take must have the proper evidence yeah, from the Quran and authentic hadith. Why did Allah or what? Why would Allah bother to bring you another Quran when none of us are following it? Isn't it true, right? Why would Allah bother to have this Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to come to you and I when nobody follow what he did, right? He didn't. He never recited Yasin on Thursday night, right? He recited Surah Al Kaf, right? And people are so busy celebrating the Prophet's birthday. Oh, this is Maulid Nabi, we need to have all these celebrations, meal. And then when the crux of what is a sunnah about, nobody cares. We just care about his birthday. Right? So so we have to be very careful with the deen, right? Because if you don't follow, and again, this is what uh, we're going to talk again a little bit again on, on Sunday, inshallah. <clears throat> When Allah revealed a verse after the Prophet's last sermon, what what, what verse was revealed? Yes, with surah, is it? Said again, you cut off. Brothers, with surah. One, one is the question. The surah that was revealed after Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam um gave his last sermon which surah was that Maida. al maida correct verse number um is it three yes right surah number five verse number three yeah, just answer. one bit at, at the last third yeah al yawma akmal tu lakum dinakum wa atmam tu alaikum ni'mati wa radhi tu lakum islam adina what does it mean today we perfected your religion yes and that's all I remember. But you need to know, isn't it true, right? Because three things are very important, right? This day, I have perfected your deen for you, your way of life, right? I have completed my favors upon you. Your yeah? Islam was complete, right? Okay. And I have made Islam, or I have chosen for you Islam as your way of life, right? And this is very important. I... I chose, I chose to use the word deen not as religion, isn't it true? Because deen is actually a way of life, isn't it true? Right? Because religion has always been interpreted as, well, I'm in the mosque, yes, this is my deen, I pray. But outside the mosque, when I'm working at, I, I'm completely different. Right? It must be a way of life. Agreed, sir? Yeah. Malim, I have a, a, another question for you yes. about the grave. <laughs> so, apart from the three things where you have a righteous child uh, knowledge and sadaqah jariah yes what, are you, what else are you supposed to do in a in a graveyard because you're supposed to visit them apparently no what do you mean you're supposed to visit them why why, why would one visit the grave no as in like it's encouraged because, just to um, remember death isn't it yes, that, that's it. right i would visit the grave right just to remind ourselves of death right okay. there is no hadith in which there's no hadith right um that okay one of the best times of places to make du'a is beside the grave. Yes, we saw Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam make du'a once, right? right. Uh, beside the grave. But other than that, there's no hadith that says, well, the best times or places to make du'a is by the graveyard. Of course, brothers, I understand, right? My mom, like my parents passed away, right? Physically, you think that actually the body is there, isn't it true? But is, is the body, is, is your parents soul is it actually there no no it's not where is it the part of the barzakh, barzakh. isn't it in the barzakh, isn't it true right 
So, so in a sense that if you think logically, right, for me personally, even though both my parents pass away, I have a sister pass away and all this, right? Um, the only reason why, okay, first of all, visit the grave because I just want to clean it, you know, just clean it a little bit, make it tidy, or all this, and that's about it, right? And of course, secondly, to demand ourselves of death, not to go there to make dua for the parents because one of the best times to make dua is in tahajjud time, is neutral, in the last third of the night, right? Or you can make dua in the last hour of Friday. Today, alhamdulillah, I'm fasting. I can make dua before I break my fast and all these kind of things, right? These are the best time to make dua, is it true? Yes. Right. So you can make it any any time for dua for them. You don't need to go to. Exactly. I don't. I don't need. I don't need to visit all the way to Singapore and then you know to have the best dua. I need to stand beside. I cry, 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 and all this. Give flowers, right? To the. I don't need to do that, right? Because all these are following imi imitations of the uh, uh, disbelievers. Isn't it true? Right. And the worst thing you and I know that we. Are, I mean, this is where you need to have trust in Allah, right? You need to really have. Um, you know, this uh, ability to know that Allah knows best your plans. Of course, you love your parents, right? But uh, you, you do not need to overdo your um, grief, like what the Shia people are doing, right? To to beat themselves to pieces, right? Regarding the death of the uh, Prophet's grandson. Okay? Any questions? Akram, okay? No, it's all good. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Okay. Now, the only dua that you need to recite when you visit the grave is? Is it not the dua in the baqi? You know, in the baqi. Um... Any dua, right? And, and in the sense that, 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 that we know from in, in like a fortress of Muslim, saying is about saying salam to the to the people of the or dwellers of the grave, right? Um, Inshallah, we're going to meet each other. I yeah, mean, Allah give us mercy. Something like that. Yeah, in a dua. Or visiting the grave. Just need to open up your fortress as a Muslim and just read from there. Okay. Um, so this is this is important. Now the the whole point about what we're discussing this is that we make sure we don't follow the majority, right? So again, talking about Ibrahim alayhi salam, right? Um, he was all alone, right? Everybody else were worshiping idols, right? And then he, with Allah's guidance, of course, right? He knew that this wasn't the truth. Again, this is something we call it. Fitra, right? Also, natural inclination, right? Um, fitra, because brothers, like it or not, we discussed before, all of us have met Allah before. Agreed? Right? So, it's something in which we cannot deny on the their judgment, right? That Allah is not our Rob. Allah is the one who provides you and I with everything. With our eyes, our ears, right? Our hands, our feet, right? The roof we will live on, open the fridge, all the food and the and the uh, uh, drinks, alhamdulillah, is all there, right? So this is our raw, right? So at no point of time, subhanallah, on a day of judgment, would a person who who um, refuse to believe in all this, right, and who commit shirik, no, at no point he will always be entering hellfire, forever. Okay, do is it? Fair that those people who commit shirik enter hellfire, even no. though they, even yes. though they were helping people in Yemen, people helping people in 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 other countries, but they commit shirik. Is it fair that they enter hellfire? It's because it's, it's yes. not it's something personal that Allah ordered. Precisely, right? This, this is Allah's haq, haqiqullah. He's his right. Very straightforward, right? That we must not have any association with Allah, right? If you do that, that's it. And what what happened if we have no association with Allah? We take none, right? As association with Allah, what is our right then with Allah? Uh, we get Jannah, inshallah, with, uh, mercy, with his mercy. Yes, specifically that he has no right to punish us. And it's quite important, right, to, to, to understand. Uh, Sheikh, the mic cuts out. Is the mic, my mic off? It makes a big difference. 
Definitely. Who, I can't like, hear you. Who, who did this? I can hear you now. Am I on mute? No, no, not no, yet, it's, it's, I couldn't hear you before. Okay, alhamdulillah. Okay. Now, so, so this is important to understand this, brothers, right? And that's why when you look at Ibrahim alayhi salams and the stories, and of course, Ik, uh, Akram, you were saying, uh, other than that, he was um, destroying all the idols, right? Um, on the basis that he, first of all, he lied, you know, because everybody was celebrating outside um, this festival, and he said, oh, I'm sick, I cannot do, I cannot go to this, join you in the, in the Shirk festival, right? And then he destroyed all the idols except the except people. So this is the second second step about how he uh, found out about about that all these are lies, and therefore, in order to make sense to the people, right? Um, how how can things in which people are worshiping how can they be destroyed? When you worship these idols, aren't you somehow or other rely on them to protect you? Do you agree, right? So, so this is not deliberately to 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 cause mayhem and destruction. It's just to make them think, right? How can um, your God uh, be destroyed, right? Same thing as um, the Hindus, right? They worship the cow and all this, right? How can we eat the gods? I mean, it doesn't make sense at all. Completely, right? It, it, it is. It doesn't make sense. Okay. Um. So. Throughout the time, right, there, there's always this issue of Tawheed when it comes to Ibrahim alayhi salam, right? And including the, the time in which, and even he was he was honored by Allah, right? By being the one who built the Kaaba. What, what an honor is it for, for someone to be given to build a Kaaba in which every time until today, right, people go there in, in, in thousands and hundreds of thousands in order to, to, to go around. The Kaaba, right? And it's a focal point of our worship, right? That is why, subhanAllah, he is called an intimate friend of Allah, right? Because whatever things Allah put on him or gave him, he would obey, right? And that is why, subhanAllah, until today, all of us are mentioning his names in our tashahud, isn't it true, right? At least twice, right? In our tashahud, in order to send salutations to him, then Allah bless him and his family. Okay? Any questions of this? Right, so so this is very important for all of us to 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 understand, right? So let's so if you turn again to surah number six, right? Um, in verse number seventy nine, if I'm not mistaken, right? Um, and eighty, so it's let, let, less than to eighty, right? In the meaning, his people disputed with him. He said, do you dispute with me concerning Allah while he has guided me? And I fear not those whom you associate with him in worship. Right? Nothing can happen to me except when Allah, when, when my Lord wills something. My Lord comprehends in his knowledge all things. Will you not then remember? So, so very firm, right? Very firm conviction about Tawheed. Yeah, very firm um advice and da'wah is given about Tawheed, about telling people, right, to think about what they're doing, right? So for me, the person that champions Tawheed the most is Ibrahim alayhi salam, right? Throughout his life and all this, he, he's, he's always been uh, uh, the, the core principle of Tawheed that happens in his life, right? Um, in terms of um, obeying Allah, and in terms of knowing who Allah is, despite being surrounded by all this disbelief, okay? Now let's let's go again to surah number two and continue, right? Now is verse number one three one. إِذَا قَالَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ أَسْلِمْ قَالَ أَسْلَمْ تُرْلِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ When his Lord said to him, "Submit," right? He said, "I have submitted myself to the Lord of the Alamin." Now this is where, right, brothers? I can guarantee you, right? The word is called. Um, Aslim, or uh, in terms of Islam, right? I can guarantee you, if you ask your friends, right? I think about at least sixty percent do not know what Islam means. Do you agree? Doesn't it have like a root word uh, meaning like peace, salam? Salam. Sal yes, of course, right? But it, it also means complete submission to Allah. Isn't it true? 
right? Complete submission, complete surrender to Allah. Whatever things that Allah said, we, we submit. We don't ask, we don't question, we submit. Do you agree? Right? We, we, don't, we do not even need to, uh, to, to know the reason why we cannot eat pork, why we cannot gamble, why we cannot drink alcohol. We just submit. Do you agree? Sami'na wa ta'na. We hear, we obey. And this is the core principle of being a Muslim, right? Not questioning, right? We do not need to know the scientific evidence. We just submit, right? Because if you fail to submit, what happened? You get uh, punished. Punished, right? Examples of people who did not submit? Quran. Very, very specific example is the Iblis and Adam. Is it true? Adam alayhi salam, right? Both of them were, were, were specifically given instructions. Do this, right? So Iblis did not submit. Worst thing, he tried to justify why he did not submit. And the worst thing did happen in paradise, when you're not supposed to have any error and any uh, disobedience, right? And worse still, right, he's arrogant. So all these combinations, and worse thing, of course, he did not repent to Allah. So all these combinations come in. What happened to him today? He did not, he will not get any of Allah's mercy. Could this happen to us? Yes, 100%. 100%. It will happen to us if we, if we are exactly like Iblis. You have to remember, brothers, and we discussed this many times, Iblis was very, very pious, extremely pious, extremely important in the early days. Isn't it true? Right? He was the one who was sent to to the earth, right? According to some narrations, to destroy the uh, to 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 defeat the defeat the jinns and all this who were disobeying Allah, right? He was so pious that he would be sent. Uh, he was sent to be to to be the guardian of the paradise. That shows how important he was. What was his mistake besides not submitting? He did not know. He, he failed to understand who is Allah. Right? He has, alhamdulillah, all of us are given the ability to have a free will to think. But make sure at the end of the day, you know, our thoughts will end up submitting to Allah completely. And not just partially. Right? And also until our last breath, right? Until we breathe our last breath. Our whole life, subhanAllah, is a life of submission. Agreed? That's why we are a slave of Allah. And the deal is this. If you are a slave of Allah, the reward of a slave of Allah will be in paradise, in the hereafter. Endure today. Endure our life in this world until the last breath. We may have a lot of temptations, but make sure, right? We ask Allah to guide us, right? So that the reward of our we call it jihad, right? The struggle, right? Um, to to please him, right? It's all it's a lot of struggle, isn't it true? As a as a human being, right? With a free will, right? That is why on the day of Arafah, right? We discussed before last week, right? Allah would be so proud of those people in Arafah. He would boast about them to the angels, right? Didn't you remember? Right when you before I created them, you said they're not they are not going to obey me. But look at them, right? They are dirty, yeah. They are dusty because of me. Because of that, I'm going to forgive all their sins. And this is very important, brothers, right? So, so this is important, right? We could talk about uh, uh, Iblis and Adam. Adam did exactly the same thing of disobedience, right? Disobedience means disobedience. It's about not following Allah's orders. Doesn't matter about the degree and all this. It's still a disobedience, right? And the fact that Allah has given him everything, right? Given him the wife, right? Eat from anything, but just don't don't come near the tree. Yeah? Right? Do not come near this tree. And that is why when he disobeyed Allah, was Allah very angry? Yeah. What? Yes. What? So what was taken away from him and his wife? His uh, clothing. All the rights and all the privacy and all the... Like what? Yeah, because he became naked. Secondly? Naked feel. Was it? Hunger and fast. 
Yes, well, hunger well, is thirst and well, you get out of jannah. Right. And and heat, right? Because yes. in jannah is very nice, it's not hot, and once it come to the uh, back, come to the earth, that's it, right? You got to search for food, search for water, and it's very hot, right? And he lost all the blessings. So, question, brothers, if you were to disobey Allah, even though we repent to Allah, would would Allah take away our, the blessings that He had given us? Yes. Yes. So, so we do have to be very careful, right? Um, and then not to take advantage of Allah's blessings, right? Remember, Allah said in the Quran, uh, "Wa in atakum, uh, in Surah number." Uh, 14 verse number 34 wa in in right 1434 and we gave Allah said, we gave him all that he asked and if you were to count the blessings of Allah never will be able to count them right indeed a man is an extreme wrongdoer right and ungrateful to Allah right? and this is you and me right but there's always, for me personally, there's always a relief when we read the Quran. What is a relief? Right? If you turn to Surah, I mean, this is one of the verses for me when I read this, Alhamdulillah, I'm not perfect. Right? So if you look in, and we discuss with Surah number 3 in verse number um, 135. Right? And this is, this is one of those people who... Uh, the people, the characteristics of those people who is a, a, a God conscious or taqwa, right? In Surah number three, in verse number one three five, right? Allah informed us. anfusahum dakarullah li-dhunubihim wa ma dhunuba illallah wa lam yusiru ala ma fa'alu Wahum Ya'lamun. Right? And this is the this is the brothers. Allah never expect you and I to be perfect. Right? Even though the Allah labeled these people as taqwa, the people with taqwa who are God conscious will still do this. Right? What would they do? Right? When they commit fahisha. So a person who is taqwa will, will may still commit immoralities. Or they wrong themselves. But what do they do when they wrong themselves? They, are, they remember Allah and they ask Allah for forgiveness for their sins. And none can forgive sins but Allah, and they do, but they do not persist. Right? This is very important. They don't persist in what wrong they have done while they know. Right? So you cannot continuously, well, I know zina is wrong, and I have to do zina and zina and zina. I can't do this, right? You, you commit mistakes, yes, ask forgiveness and stop it. And this is very important, right? You know gambling is wrong. You can, you, 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 yes, you make one mistake. Yeah, you call out this, use your mobile phones, you know, all, all these, uh, a lot of gambling things on. And then, you know, you ask Allah for forgiveness. And that's it, right? You finish this sin and make dua that Allah guide you. Always remember the fact that you and I may not do certain sins. is all from Allah, isn't it true? Allah is guiding you and I not to touch the sin at all. Right, and this is this is something in which we have to be grateful to Allah. Right, He is protecting you and I from committing further sins. The fact that brothers, you and I, alhamdulillah, on this day, on the Thursday, yeah, some of us are fasting. Right, some of us, uh, alhamdulillah, you and I are reminding ourselves of Allah. Is itself is a blessing from Allah, isn't it true? He guides you and I to talk about this, right, so that we are able to remind ourselves about the hereafter. Okay. Now let's let's come back to surah number two and we continue. So submit Islam, submission to Allah. And it's so important to understand this, right? A lot of people think that well, submission is something in which, well, I submit this, this one I don't submit, right? All the best to you in the hereafter you have this kind of mentality, right? Because we saw from uh, Iblis how he submitted everything else except bowing down to Adam alayhi salam. Where is his faith now? Hellfire permanently. Okay. Now, Surah number two, continue in verse number one, three. Yeah, sorry, one, three, two. Okay. 
wa wassa biha ibrahimu banihi wa yaqubu ya baniya inna allaha astafa lakumud dina fala tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun and this submission to allah was enjoined by ibrahim upon his sons and by yaqub o sons yaqub alayhi salatu says o sons right allah has chosen for you the true religion and do not die in the faith of islam right do not die except in the faith of islam now that's very important right brothers you have children right um some of you right adam right you need those of you children you need you need to show this or remind the children about this right about how allah has chosen you and i to be muslims is is a chosen we are the chosen people alhamdulillah allah could have chosen you and i not to believe is it true but allah has chosen us right and we we must remind each other not just about oh you must do good in maths you must not fail your exam right you must work hard right you must study hard for your exam it's not just that is it true right you must advise them your children right do not die except in a state of islam and this absolutely important right as in surah i think it was surah number 3 verse number 102 ya ayyuhallatina amanu taqullaha haqqa tuqati wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun oh you believe have taqwa to allah as it is due and do not die except in the state of islam right complete submission to allah not islam by name islam by name but complete submission to allah okay now um 133 quickly am kuntum shuhada id hadara yaqub al maut id qala li banihi ma ta'buduna min ba'di qalu qalu na'budu ilahaka wa ilaha abaika ibrahim wa ismail wa ishaq ilaha wahida wa nahnu lahu muslimun right or were you witnesses when death approached yaqub when he said unto his sons what will you worship after me they said we will worship your ilah your god allah the ilah of your fathers ibrahim ismail ishaq one ilah and to him we submit very important right this is where allah is teaching you and i right when we when we have our children right make sure we teach them about tauhid make sure we teach them about the fact that we have been chosen by allah right as allah chose all the previous prophets in terms of submitting to allah we have to submit to allah completely right and very very important even at the death bed right so you we have we, we saw here yaqub alayhi salam advise the children what will you what who will you worship subhanallah even a prophet of allah right is so afraid that the children are not going to worship allah reminding them at the death beds so what about you and i we have to follow the same examples into with our children remind them it's not just about or oh, do well in school and all this is as it is now you need to remind them about worshiping uh, about the oneness of allah okay so so this is an example that you and i we have to try and follow right 1 3 4 tilka ummatun qad khalas laha ma kasabat wa lakum ma kasabtum wa la tusaluna amma kanu ya'malun that was a nation who passed away they shall receive the reward of what they earned and you of what you earn and you will not be asked of what they used to do so all of us are responsible for our own deeds we will not be responsible for the things that they do neither will they be, they be responsible for the things that we do the most important thing brothers that you and i we have a golden opportunity now right to to follow what allah has taught us in the quran completely follow what we have been taught analyze what we read contemplate the word and inshallah to implement what we have read right so the the the, the most common theme or the most important theme about things that we we discussed today is about tawhid is neutral right the alhamdulillah right we, we always praise allah when, when we say brothers when we say now al-fatiha alhamdulillah rabbil alamin mean it right because even to pray to stand up to remember him is all from allah isn't it true right the fact that you and i are even thanking allah alhamdulillah it is all from allah right nothing that happens is without allah's permission 
right? So something in which you and I, we have to really, really thank Allah, right? For allowing you and I to be chosen, alhamdulillah, inshallah, as, a, uh, under the, uh, as, as among the dwellers of the paradise. Okay, any questions? Yes, right how about the, about the jinn expelled from the earth before? Yes. So is, it, so is the jinn of Iblis children or what? That's why I don't understand it that bit. Yes, so, so in general, there was this population, I mean, uh, this is not, not all scholars agreed on this, right? There's some scholars who said about this. I think Ibn Abbas was one of these people who, who said about this, right? The earth was populated by the group of jinns, right? Now, and then after that, all of them have been either, some of them are killed, and they, they were sent to an island, according to some narrations, right? To be, um, to be ostracized from the rest, right? Mm. So, and, and this is it, right? Not sure, we were not informed about whether these are the ancestors of Iblis, and we do not know, Okay. right? But all we know is that Iblis is equivalent to the Adam in terms of being that that forefront of the, the, the top of the pyramid of the four because we yes. are the Bani Adam, isn't it true, right? Yes. So the Shayatin you see today are the, are the, are the Bani Iblis in a sense, right? I, I see, I see, I see, okay. And, 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 they, and what's, it, what's the difference between jinns and Shaitan? Well, jinn is they are they are all Muslim, one, isn't it? Like they are jinn who are Muslim, isn't it? It's, who are but but are, are they are they the same creation? Yes. yes. Yeah, they are the same, right? Is well, that the fight? Slight. Shaitan is a jinn. We know in Surah Al Kaf, right? They made of fire and all this, right? They have ability yeah. to choose, but because of the fact that Iblis has somehow either disobeyed Allah and. The, his future generations are all not able to, to get Allah's mercy. Same thing as Yak Juj and Mak Juj. Yeah, yes, right? yes. Yak Juj and Mak Juj gonna be, is, is still somewhere around. Right? Don't believe others. Is, oh, is, is it, they are still around. They are going to come out soon. Right? Yeah. Near the day yeah. of judgment. All of them will be in hellfire. This is Allah's plan. We, we can't question why are they in hellfire. Right? That's Same thing true. as Abu Lahab, right? You would think that, well, Abu Lahab may perhaps one day uh, repent to Allah, but Allah did say in the Quran, right, well, he's going to be in hellfire, isn't it true? And his wife. Yeah. Right? Uh, we got no control about who Allah guides. That's why we need to be grateful to Allah, right? Can you imagine, brothers, if your name came up in, in the Quran, right, among those people, right? And it's quite, quite strange, isn't it true, right? But the children... Some of the sons of Abu Lahab, they became Muslim, isn't it true, right? Yeah. Uh, Subhanallah, right? So we do not know who is going to be guided, but the choice is you and it's up to you and I, isn't it true? Do you agree? We have a yep. freedom of choice, right? Whether you want to be uh, obedient to Allah, whether you... It, it's all about effort. Oh, okay. But at the end of the day, whether we are going to be in hellfire or paradise, we do not know. It all depends on Allah's mercy, right? Sometimes, they say, brothers, the more knowledge we have, the more we are not confident at all, isn't it true, right? Yes. Because we think about our past misdeeds, we think about our shortcomings, and the more we are so not confident. That's what, subhanAllah, is, is the Sahaba themselves, right? Even though they are promised Jannah, they were the one who cried the most, right? What about you and I, right? We have oh Allah's Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, right? He will he will he will shower us with his mercy and all this. Yes, of course, right? But don't be too overconfident, right? Because we just still do not know what is our fate in the end, right? We cannot just relax, right? Uh, you know, shake our legs and then that's it, right? Um, just assume that we are going to enter Jannah. There must be effort all the way until our last breath. Okay, that is why even Imam Ahmad was um, before he lost his last breath, right? And people were asking him to say his shahada. He said, no, no, no. And what did he say? No, because the shaitan came, right? And shaitan said to him, relax. You are a big sheikh. Everybody looking up to you. You need to relax now. 
right? Why bother? You be in Jannah. And he said, no, 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 right? Until we breathe our last breath with La ilaha illallah, then inshallah, we leave it to Allah. We have done our best, right? There's nothing much we can do. The worst thing, brothers, many people would always in their judgment, we always say, I wish I have one more hour. I wish I have one more day. Isn't it true? Brothers, like when we in our exams, right? We always say in our exams, examination, I wish I have one more hour and then I can go to this page. I wish I have one more day, then I can go through all these other things that we have not done. Isn't it true? Exactly the same in the day of judgment. Alright? Any questions? Uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> to... okay. uh, can I go first, please? Sorry? Oh, no, I was talking to the other guy, if I could uh, ask yeah, him first. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, you can go. Uh, thank you. Uh, Sheikh, you know when you said uh, uh, Shaitan, uh, his, uh, you said the, his generation, like the one, his generations that are coming, yes. um, did you say then they won't be able to receive Allah's mercy? What about if they, if some jinn were like also, they were Muslim? No, you, you, yeah, but jinns and Shaitan is very different. Oh, right? okay, 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 I understand. Shaitan is part of jinn, but not all jinns will be in hellfire. Right? Because we, we saw in Surah Jin, right? Some of them were listening to Prophet Muhammad through citation. Some of them uh, were submitted to Allah and all this, right? They're different, right? Somehow, other, what who whoever Allah has already uh, predetermined to be in hellfire, Subhanallah. I mean, it is Allah's will, right? Um, because so many of there are many false narrations you see from some hadith. Oh, Iblis is one day, Shaitan is going to repent to Allah and all that. It's no such thing, right? Shaitan will be in hellfire, right? The worst thing is that Shaitan, Shaitan will say to the people of hellfire, I didn't ask you to do it, you do it yourself. Isn't it true? In surah number 14, I think verse number 22. I didn't, ask, I didn't force you, you are the one who followed me. Right? Yeah. I mean, who, when, 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 when you are not, well, we are not praying for Fajr, when you are sleeping <laughs> in the morning, right? Oh. Shaitan never forced us, if you pray, I'm going to kill you, right? <laughs> it's our fault. We are the one who never pay attention. We never say our well, Tukursi properly, right? We say it, but we don't know what it means, right? And then, you know, when we wake up at about 8 o'clock, then you panic, right? At least humble you panic. Some people come in and bother to, oh, it's okay, 8 o'clock, let's sleep again, right? So this is something in which, again, everything we need to ask Allah to, inshallah, to guide us all the time, right? Sure. Brothers, the the love is very short, right? Um, on the day of judgment, for sure, right, me included, right? We will regret the time that we have not worked hard enough, right, to worship Allah in this world. There will be a person who was who will be all, who is always prostrating in this world in this life. Yet he himself, right, uh, regretting that he did not do enough, right. So let's take advantage, inshallah, if if we live to see the ten days of Zulhijjah, right, in which deeds are more believed to Allah than even jihad. Let's take advantage of this, right, inshallah, next Tuesday or Wednesday, depends on the setting of the moon, to work hard, isn't it true, right? Allah is so merciful, giving you and I the opportunity. To, to gain more rewards, right? To do more good deeds, right? So let's use this opportunity, right? To read the Quran more, right? To attend more classes, to memorize more Quran, to do more the care, to ask forgiveness and all this. Right? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to guide all of us in the right path. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all our deeds, especially in the month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to increase our iman and taqwa, uh, guide our family members in the right path. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, help people who are suffering in Syria, in Yemen, yeah, in Palestine, in all the countries that are suffering. You know, as well, grant them patience, right? I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, grant you and I Janatul uh, Firdaus. Subhanallah wa ashadu ala ila anta wa astagfirullah wa tuhibu alaik subhanahu wa rabbika rabbil inzata masifun wa aslam al mursalin wa alhamdulillah alamin aslamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Right? Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.